You're listening to Salford City Radio, 94.4 FM. Yeah. You're listening to Salford City Radio, the Friday sports show on 94.4 FM. With your host, Jimmy Petruzzi, bringing you news from local era and around the world. The aim of the show is to increase participation and awareness of different sports. And we've been very fortunate in this show to interview some of the world's best athletes, sports people, people involved in sports across a wide range of disciplines, from coaching, psychologists, performers. We also have a segment featuring some of the most influential people in the field of psychology, related fields, speaking about mental health and their perspective and their research in, in the area. Today, we have a really interesting guest who's going to be speaking to us about netball, um, particularly in the area as well. So some, some great stuff going on in the area of Salford, the truly sporting community. It's Abby Barry. She's the netball development officer at Greater Manchester. Welcome to the show, Abby. Great to have you on board. Thank you. Yeah. So, Abby, so just sort of tell us a bit about your role just for our listeners. What, what do you sort of do? What does your role involve? Yeah, so I'm the netball development officer for Greater Manchester, like you said. And it's basically just, you know, helping our, our clubs and our leagues to deliver um, netball, whether it's junior competitions or senior competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also helping to um, expand on our um, programs. So we've got sort of back to netball, which is if you've previously played netball, um, you know, whether it's at high school or whatever, and you're sort of not mm-hmm. that confident that you don't want to go, you know, straight into a club environment. So mm. we have these sessions to obviously, you know, develop confidence and stuff. Yes. Um, so we've got that. And then we've also got walking netball um, yeah. as well. Um, we've got sort of a primary school offer and stuff. So I oversee, you know, the clubs, the leagues, and then obviously these community programs. And then also um, a real focus is just trying to get non-stereotypical netballers um, mm-hmm. To playing again so you know i've done sessions with with refugees and asylum seekers um looking at going into prisons as well so just mm. really developing um netball i guess yeah that sounds really interesting and what was your inspiration um to go into this sort of role uh it seems like a quite uh you know quite an interesting role really so what sort of inspired you to sort of go into the role um it was sort of a completely different route that I took so I used to be a teacher um, in mm-hmm. a primary school so really understood the value of sport then um, and yeah. obviously you know for for children in, in primary schools and stuff PE lessons were amazing sort of you know for the mental health and stuff and relieved them from the stress of you know their everyday lessons yeah so I sort of took a step away then from teaching and did a master's in sport management yeah And then, yeah, just sort of, I'm not a netballer, so I don't play netball. I was never, I wouldn't say I wasn't interested in netball, but netball wasn't my go-to sport. Mm -hmm. Um, I play football and follow football. Um, But I just really like what netball can offer and where netball's going. So we've just um, recently announced our new 10-year adventure strategy. And some Mm -hmm. of the stuff on there is just, I don't know, it's almost exciting to, to be a part of now, just to mm. see how it can grow and, and develop and stuff. But, yeah, it was an interesting <laughs> interesting yeah. way to sort of get into into the career in the sector from, I don't know, originally being a primary school teacher to yeah, yeah. then developing netball. But, no, absolutely. But no, it's, it's been interesting and obviously learnt loads no, of while I've been here as well. Yeah, I can imagine. And, I mean, you mentioned there the plan and so... I mean, generally speaking, what what is the vision to just increase participation of netball as 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 wide as you can? Or I'm sure there's a lot more to it than, than that. But so yeah. yeah. So we've also got para netball as well. Mm-hmm. Um. So we have a para netball club in Greater Manchester, and it was the first one in the northwest. Yeah. So they basically put on para netball sessions for anybody with a disability. So there's that sort of aspect of it too. Yeah. But it's yeah. also the visibility of netball so um you know we have deals with sky where they will show um the vitality super league so they're yeah. increasing just the awareness of of netball matches and stuff um but yeah then like i said before just um accessing those areas that you know if, if we're being totally honest there is a stereotype of your typical netballer mm-hmm. um and it's just all about breaking the stereotype and breaking the norms um yeah 
And then, yeah, we've also do, just done a partnership with the Men's and Mix Association. So then getting, you know, more males involved in, in playing netball and I guess just sort of helping grow the idea that you don't mm. have to be just a male team or just a female team. There's there's mixed teams as well. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Is I mean, there's not sort of well too many sports that I know that that there are mixed teams in terms of competitive leagues. Are they sort of competitive leagues? Are uh, being the mixed teams where people like compete in a league, or is it just sort of recreational? No, yeah, there are leagues um, wow. that are mixed leagues. So we have sort of leagues that are recognised and authorised and affiliated with England netball and then we have sort of social commercial leagues mm. um, but yeah no mixed netball happens in, in leagues and it's still competitive yeah, that's, um, yeah, that sounds which really is it is sort of really interesting because usually it's you know this is males this is females right, yeah. they don't yeah, 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 mix yeah. and if they do mix it's you know at, at junior level exactly yeah that's, that's one of my sort of thoughts really but that's that's you know quite interesting and in terms of like people getting involved i know you sort of there's a lot of initiatives that are going on you mentioned walking netball and amongst other things and and you know southford being particularly a really sort of you know strong community for sport there's a lot of sport going on in the area in terms of a lot of you know big sporting establishments in in in, in the greater manchester area but what what are some of the things people can look out for and maybe get involved in uh, abby what do you sort of What's, what's available to, to the general person listening in thinking I'd like to maybe play, um, you know, walking netball or, or maybe just get involved, you know, at, at a certain level? What, what can I do to sort of get involved and what are some of the things going on in the area? Yeah, so first and foremost, I would say head to the website. Um, mm-hmm. There is something that we call a session finder and a club finder. And if you just whack your postcode in there, it'll mm. bring up everything that's local. But we do have... Um, a back to netball session at the Co-op Academy in Walkden. Mm-hmm. Um, that's on a Monday evening, and then not too far away in Trafford at George Cornell Community Hub, we've got a walking netball session mm-hmm. um, on a Wednesday evening. But yeah, we're looking at bringing walking netball to Salford as well. And then we'll have just done a um, children's netball camp. Mm-hmm. So we're teaming up with Manchester Flavour and, and Spartans Men's Netball Club to, again, just offer netball as, as part of half term. So that's free of charge for Brilliant. you know the ones that came along. And then we also are now doing packages with, with Manchester Thunder, which are the um, Super League franchise for, for Manchester. Yeah. So we're doing, it's like a, a big walk in netball session. Um, we're going to have a bit of match play, a bit of um, a Bake Off competition. Yeah. Um, and then included in that, so it's £20 per person, included in that then is a Manchester Thunder ticket to go and, to go and watch a game. Wow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's there's various different things coming up, but everything, you know, will be on the website or will be on, you know, the Greater Manchester Facebook page or my email address is abby, A-double-B-E-Y mm-hmm. dot barry b-a-double-r-y at englandnetball.co.uk so mm. someone can just buy me an email and i'll send over you know yeah any close sessions or clubs or i guess just answer any questions on how they can get involved and stuff but yeah, you yeah. know there's so many opportunities and and sessions and clubs out there i don't actually think people realize because yeah, yeah. not almost in your face mm-hmm. absolutely but then once you know and you know all the doors are open to what actually is going on yeah, absolutely. And in terms of for, uh, from a level point of view, I mean, what sort of um, levels do, do do you guys cater for? Is if someone hasn't played before? Are they able to sort of pop down and in terms? Yeah, of, yeah. yeah. So the um, session that happens at Curl Academy Walton is designed for those sort of basic beginner level. Mm. Um, you know, to gain confidence, those that haven't played before. That yeah, yeah. You know, just want to want to try it out, and then you know they can either stay with that group and and develop, or they might decide actually I'm confident enough now, I've got the skills to move on into a local club. Yeah. And yeah. then obviously in that local club you play the leagues, um, and it's a bit more competitive. Mm. But no, all the you know we have different clubs and stuff that are either development clubs or we have you know sort of more performance clubs. So. Again, there's, there's multiple different options, but 
won't know unless you know you look or you sort of in the loop of it all. Mm, absolutely, and in terms of like the, the Super League you mentioned there, uh, in terms of the the Super League, in, is that sort of the the main league, the high the highest league? Um, that uh, yeah yeah yeah. So that's the highest um, league that you know you have in netball, um, sponsored by by Charlie as well. So it's a good little good little deal. Um, mm. But yeah, no, you can watch. So the games are, are streamed on YouTube. Um, oh, yeah. Or also Sky Sports will, will put them on mm. every so often. Yeah. Um, but again, it's just all about, I guess, just getting visibility and getting more people, you know, understanding. I don't think a lot of people realise how actually it's quite fast paced. No, I can imagine. I that, yeah. I think about netball from from when I was younger, and to what looking at sort of how it is now, it's sort of quite different, and it's it's very fast pace and it just opens your eyes to actually what a difficult sport it is to sort of yeah you know bring it top level for and, I mean the actual sort of season the, the, the sort of the, the tournament the um the, the, the tournaments in terms of playing is it all year round is it a specific time of year where people can sort of uh, participate in, in netball as well how, how, how does that sort of run in terms of um, like the season itself so we have sort of two types of, of leagues we have summer leagues and winter leagues oh, okay. yeah. um, and each league will play depending on whether they want to be a winter league or a summer league or both yeah yeah um, and then so this is sort of like a, a community level and then if something isn't put on by one of the leagues mm. then we will then run what we call festivals okay so we'll have you know sort of tournaments and stuff um just so there's something always on, so it's not, you know, mm. it, it's not sort of like football where, yeah, you know, yeah. over summer there might be a couple of months of, That's correct, of nothing. Yeah, yeah. There is obviously, you know, like the pre-season bit for the main sort of types of leagues, but we will always sort of try and have something on it at some point. Yeah, yeah. And like, what age group can people start um, netball, just generally speaking, to sort of to, to sort of go down and, and compete or sort of play in a league or... Is there, is there a specific age where they can sort of begin to, to play? Um, I guess it, it just depends on, on the clubs that are around. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah. So some clubs will have what we call B netball, which is like the primary school offer. Uh, okay. um, you know, which is, I don't the clubs usually start, if they are doing sort of juniors, it's, it's under eights, under nines. Yes. which depends on the 11s type of yes. primary school. Um, but they will sometimes run sessions younger than that. It's just obviously club by club. Um, ideally, the children are playing at primary school and you know there might be an extracurricular club on there. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're doing it that way and then you know we'll try and have clubs to go younger to junior to then um, you know try and work alongside sort of the extracurricular stuff that they're getting at school um but yeah it just depends club by club as to what age group yeah they want to yeah. start at yeah but yeah. again if if you know people go to the website or give me an email i can absolutely. i can say sort of for the specific club that's local absolutely this is what they offer type thing yeah that's that's really good i mean i'm sure there's sort of our listeners many will have children as well who they sort of considering maybe getting involved in that ball or, or maybe just you know like you said before in terms of you know walking that ball and sort of catering for different levels but i suppose you know it, what about if say someone does show like ability uh, abby say say someone sort of turns up and they've got exceptional ability is there an opportunity like a realistic opportunity in terms of them maybe getting involved in super league is that uh, that might be sort of outside the remit of the conversation but if any listeners sort of you know maybe they sort of have exceptional ability it would that sort of depend on the, the, the super league team itself or is there sort of a pathway for people to maybe go and play super league yeah so the manchester thunder which is obviously the, the manchester franchise mm -hmm. they have their own pathway um but we also have a county team and okay. regional teams Brilliant. um the, so that the trials happen um and if they're selected then to represent county or 
you know, then to represent regionals and have national tournaments then and, and national leagues. Um, we also have a schools competition. So it's usually yeah. at secondary school, um, which will then complete compete nationally um, in a national schools um, sort of competition. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely options. And I think as well in netball, everyone is very well connected. Mm. So if someone sees, you know, someone that's a rising talent and someone that is displaying, you know, sort of high performance skills and abilities, mm -hmm. then they will nine times out of ten know where to direct them. Yeah, um, brilliant. But no, there's, there's definitely sort of people within Greater Manchester that have represented at, at Super League level um, and that are playing now and, you know, especially going through the pathways and stuff. There's people in... Um, the Roses pathway. So Roses is our England national team. Mm, mm. There's also sort of that pathway as well. Brilliant. So lots of options. <laughs> no, absolutely. That's really good. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's great stuff. It's been really informative uh, speaking to you and, and sort of hopefully, um, you know, some of the sort of listeners sort of, you know, tuning in and, you know, whether they want to get involved um, as, as a participant or just maybe pop down and see what it's all about. Uh, definitely, I, I know you sort of shared the, the website details again, but just sort of, um, you know, is there anything else that you, you can think of coming up uh, uh, before our listeners, or if you could just remind listeners of the website, um, just in case they want to get in touch and sort of know more and get involved? Yeah, so it's the England Netball um, website, literally, if you just type in England Netball Session Finder mm -hmm. into Google, it'll bring up... Um, sort of a button that you can press but if you just pop your postcode in it'll bring up sessions so whether it's you know back to netball walking netball something like that brilliant um and then there's also england netball club finder which will direct um any listeners to local clubs and it'll say if they offer junior or if it's senior or if it's both um but then just again my email address if anyone just wants to contact me directly is Abby, so A double B E Y mm -hmm. dot Barry B A double R Y at englandnetball dot co dot uk. Brilliant. Um, and I can just fire over anything specific. Brilliant. Now that's fantastic. Uh, you know, definitely one of the aims of the show is to increase the awareness and participation of, of sports, and it's certainly been informative. Um, you know, speaking to you, that's for sure. And, and you know, uh, hopefully, um, some of the listeners sort of who are interested do get in touch and. Um, it's also about getting people out there, and, you know, playing sports. So, really want to thank you for coming on board the show, Abby. It's been great speaking to you on the Friday Sports Show, and we wish you every success um, in your role. And, and sort of, hopefully, netball keeps growing and gets more people on board in the future. Yeah, no, well, thank you for having me. Brilliant. That was Abby Barry, who's the uh, netball development officer at Greater Manchester. Um, do do get in touch on that uh, on the netball website if you're interested in getting involved in, in, in the game and obviously it's a fantastic sport, um, great for fitness, great from a social point of view as well, but also great I think in terms of maybe uh, transferring skills. We're getting out there, you might play another sport and just want to, you know, speed of movement, hand-eye coordination and amongst other things. So you know definitely and a great opportunity also to play um in, in a league if possible too and, and all levels too so really informative um conversation there for our listeners i believe sort of do do get in touch and take it from there so on friday sports show with your host from Jersey, bringing you news from the local area and around the world so you're listening to south of city radio the friday sports show with your host jimmy Petruzzi, bringing you news from the local area and around the world and we're very fortunate to show to interview some of the world's best athletes sports people coaches People have come on board on the show to give us insights into different sports. We also have a, fe a segment featuring um, some of the most influential people in psychology and related fields. And our aim of the show really is to bring South of the world and the world to South and increase awareness of participation of sport. We really want to increase participation and awareness of sport. And just following up on from our conversation uh, with Netball, we've got another really interesting guest who's been kind enough to join us who is the captain of, of, of uh, Spartans men in Manchester, and also head coach too, who's going to give us more insight. I'm sure they'll be able to give us more um, more of an insight into what they do than, than I can. So, um, Caswell Palmer, welcome to the show. Great to have you on board. Yeah, great, uh, great to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah, 
Casper, in terms of netball, what, what inspired you to go into netball? What was your sort of um, inspiration to sort of participate in netball? Uh, well, I grew up with four sisters, and uh, and all all of them play netball. So I, uh, I mean, I've always been around the sport. Yeah. Um, however, um, I just start going to training sessions um, with them and uh, thought that it was quite easy, um, and just yeah. try to find out how I could possibly get involved. And uh, the head coach at the time told me about uh, coaching and officiating and stuff, and. Uh, and I tried it and I enjoyed it and it just kind of developed from there and uh, until I started playing um, netball and stuff and, uh, and then it just kind of escalated from there and get into men's netball. Yeah, yeah. And and so you, your role, you're a captain and a head coach as well. And um, What does that involve sort of um, in terms of, you know, being a sort of captain of a team? Uh, well, uh, the role of captain um, in regards to uh, Spartans men. Um, yeah. Well, I'm basically just there as um, a figurehead for the guys um, to ensure that everything runs smoothly both on and off the court. Yeah. Um, later on, the coaches. Um, and I'm basically there as a, a shoulder to lead on when the when the guys have any queries and yeah. stuff as to ensure that the training sessions are, are run um, smoothly. The guys have everything that they they need. Um, and also any rows or feedback or anything that they felt comfortable um, talking to me about in regards to I can pass it on to the coaches mm. uh, and just ensure that there is a very healthy and happy environment for the guys to be training. Absolutely. And in terms of, say, I mean, I spoke earlier to, um, to Abby and, and she talked about how the goal was to sort of, you know, get netball out there amongst other things and and sort of increase awareness. And we sort of talked about how, um, you know, men's netball as well. Um, just for our listeners in terms of, you know, any men looking to get in, into netball, what, what's the sort of pathway for them, uh, Caswell? If, if, you know, we've got plenty of listeners who listen to the show and, and they're keen sports people, sports enthusiasts. If any of them want to get involved in, in netball, is any how, how can they sort of go about doing that? Well, the great thing about it is that uh, men's netball have various different clubs across the country. So wherever um, they are um, situated, we have the, the England Men's and Mixed Netball Association, which is the governing body for men's netball in this country. Yeah. Uh, so we we are easily um, um, able to be to be found on um, social media. We've got a, a website. Um, so if if they're interested in playing netball, they can contact um, the England Men's and Mixed Netball Association representative Brilliant. and they will point them in the right direction in regards to the club that is closer to them. Yeah. Um, and then once they contact that club, um, that club is responsible of actually taking them through the whole process in regards to inviting them down to, to the training session, mm. um, let them get a feel of the game and see how, you know, how they like it. And um, yeah, and we actually take guys from various different backgrounds in sports, so mm. it's not just netball. If you've never played the sport before, that's perfectly fine. Mm. Um, that's what the coaches are there for, to, to help uh, build and harness the skills. And obviously, mm. because most of them are coming from different sporting backgrounds, they are transferable skills anyway. Absolutely, so yeah. kind of technical details that the coach obviously would need to, to work on, but if mm. there's any guys out there that fancy uh, have run out and uh, they're in the Manchester region, then Spartans is a, is a place um, for them, and we are on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, so they mm. can just type in Spartans with netball and uh, I send us a message and we'll be in contact with them. No, brilliant. And I, I mean, I, I would imagine that the pace and intensity of netball, in terms of, I mean, you mentioned there. Um, a transferable skill that you know absolutely I think you know anyone that sort of you know it is sort of a cross transference of skills there absolutely I think you know the speed but what are some of the demands on on sort of playing netball I mean I, I would imagine that sort of to, you know you're going to have agility pace power um, hand eye coordination as well there just seems to be I mean what, I mean it's probably you're better to sort of to, to tell the listeners than, than I am but what are the sort of the physical demands of, of netball? Um, 
what did you just say? Sorry, repeat that. Uh, sort of the, the physical demands in playing netball in terms of for our listeners sort of listening in, thinking, you know, in terms of to sort of to get in shape. I mean, what, what how does what, what are the physical demands to, to play netball? Well, I mean, netball has actually um, evolved, so the game is really fast and, yeah. and, and technical, especially when you play at the um, elite level, um, which most of the men's uh, predominantly men's netball around the country um, plays now because. They're obviously competing against or training with um, international athletes from the various um, Super League netball teams. So, I mean, fitness is definitely a major key. Um, athletic ability, uh, that comes second nature for men um, who play sports, to be honest. So, and that's one of the transferable skills I was speaking about. And yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, the, the, and coordination and whatever. But I think the most technical part of it is would be obviously is to ensure um, the footwork rule um, is it's quite technical because most of the guys who are like coming from basketball get to bounce the ball and, uh, okay. and, and yeah. technically kind of run with it um, whereas in a ball you, you have to ensure that you you you're, you're, you're static when once you, you've landed with the ball and you have only three seconds before you have to release it so it's more to kind of get the the main um, rules ingrained into the guys yeah, um, yeah, yeah. to kind of shift them from the, the previous sport that they, they, they're they accustomed to Absolutely. and get their, their more thinking in a netball uh, more vibes and, and stuff like that. But, I mean, as I said previously, you know, that's what the, the training are, um, are for uh, and the coaches are quite um, qualified and capable enough to, to mm. develop a um, Session plans that will will help people because obviously all the guys are not going to be at the same level in yeah, regards yeah. to netball ability, yeah. and, and that's why we we take the, the training so seriously and try to train as much as possible um, yeah. that we can to ensure the guys are um, keep on um, improving. Absolutely, and sort of what what uh, how often do you guys train, uh, Caswell? Like, do you train during the week or? How often do you yeah, well, well um, the Spartan men uh, train twice a week. So we wow. train on a Wednesday, Wednesday night from 8 till, till 10 at yeah. the Mossside um, Powerhouse in, um, in Mossside on Raby Street. Yeah, and yeah. then on a Saturday afternoon at the Bellevue Sports Complex okay. um, from 2 till 4. Wow. Um, so, yeah, and um, so it's like a two hour session. Each two, each session is, is, is two hours. And, uh, and then we try to um, implement or uh, get practice matches to obviously um, put in practice what the guys have learned. So it kind of helps them to improve at a more rapid pace. Yeah, and just out of, out of interest, just in, what 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 sort of do you do during training? Do you like speed drills, or is it like you mentioned there? You do sort of like you know, is this sort of tactical? Is, is the session like variable in terms of what you guys do? Do you like fitness work as well, or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a combination of, of yeah. all of the above that you just listed. Because obviously, um, as, as, um, as players, we, we, we have our own responsibility to ensure that our fitness is, is kept to yeah, a, um, yeah. a minimum. However, we do have sessions that are only focused on um, an increase in um, intensity and fitness. But also, we have tactical play. Um, and then, obviously, we have um, areas that we, we work with with people as a group or um, individuals where um, a particular player might need um, assistance in regards to improve a particular um, technical skill. So um, it, it varies from week to week, but yeah. what it does is it continues, so wherever you left off, you kind of pick up from there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a progression over um, a period of time. Yeah, and in terms of the the Spartans uh, men's team, I mean, what, what league do you guys play in, uh, Caswell? What what league is that? That do you guys play in the league? Well, we haven't got a league as, as yet. Um, yeah. the, the England men's and uh, big football association are in the process of actually uh, uh, okay, yeah, organizing yeah. and accommodating a league per se. However, we have our annual national uh, championship, which uh, is normally held in August. Yes. Um, but then, but most of the men's teams are like training partners for for um, the Super League teams oh, okay. in in, in, uh, in the country, wow. and also we play against um, national Premier League and even regional league. So it's more as if we are training partners for the females at the That's moment, and yeah, and, uh, so, yeah, so, and so, we are kind of in the process of formalizing our own um, league. 
So, so, so the like for example, um, like have you guys played against the, um, the, the uh, a female Super League team? Have you? Yeah, um, yeah, we we uh, if you're talking about the Spartans, uh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. we played uh, a, a few um, Super League teams. But you do have Knights and you have uh, wow. Giants who are, who are the, the, the two um, top teams in, in the country who who have been around. The, um, wow. I mean, Knights have been around um, long before us, so they have played against a lot of uh, Super League um, teams. This year, we have played. Um, in the Rise Against Festival, so Knight and Spartans were invited to the Rise Against Festival, which Manchester Thunder um, mm. hosted in, wow. uh, in Manchester. Um, so we actually played against quite a few of the, the Super League um, teams and stuff. Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah, and it's a continuing process. I mean, um, the guys that are improving on a, on a daily basis, so the, yeah. the Super League um, franchise are really accommodating and, um, and appreciate the fact that we can... Um, give them good experience or, or practices for to bring forward into the upcoming Super League Absolutely. Uh, championship. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I mean, how, and how, did you, how do you guys get on against the um, the Super League team? I mean, is it sort of, how, how did you guys get on against the, the Super League? Well, I would say it's, it's quite competitive. I mean, the, um, the Super League team, the, the, the guys are, are, are very fit and, uh, yeah, and, they, yeah. um, and very organized and obviously yeah, yeah. And probably have more depth. Um, than the men, um, yeah. so more often than not, um, for uh, Spartans, uh, they'll will obviously lose against them, yeah. but we'll give them um, very good um, competition. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. That yeah, so I mean, it's sort of I suppose it's sort of you know good good competition as well for them to you know to to, to play and and as well and sort of. Yeah, so in and for for the in terms of the Super League, so for our listeners, we, we spoke earlier to Abby Simpson. And look, the Super League is that sort of highest league in terms of um, the women's league in, in this sort of country. Just to put it into perspective, in terms of how the level they are, yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah, it is it is the highest um, level for for netball within this country. Yeah, yeah, uh, and most of the, the, the ladies that play um, on um, in this league is a part of the the English Roses uh, yes. national. Um, team and also Wales and and Scotland. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. yeah. And um, and also in in the England pathway. So maybe they're probably not in the senior squad, but also on the under twenty ones and stuff. Uh, yeah, of course. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's the highest level you can you can get within the country. Absolutely. And and so like the the the, the nucleus of the the England sort of squad and and is is from the the Super League. Um, the 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 actual national team, they, the 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 Cashman that plays is from the Super League. Uh, Casual is that the uh, definitely. Um, yeah, and yeah. Every single one of the, the players who who plays for the English Roses, if they're not playing their trade overseas in Australia, New Zealand, yeah, um, then it's only the Super League that they they are um, selected from. Brilliant, yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's that. and in terms of yourself, I mean, what's your sort of vision going forward? I mean, you're very passionate about the game and. And, and sort of, you know, um, you sort of the captain and, a, you know, you head coach as well. And where do you sort of see yourself in the game, Caswell? What's sort of your, um, you know, just keep going, keep, um, yeah. I mean, um, I think um, right now um, I'm currently um, focusing on my um, umpiring because I've, I've, I've recently been um, selected for the uh, umpire within the, the VSNL Super League, uh, yeah. which we had the opening weekend um, on, on the 5th and the 6th of, uh, of February in, in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's more to just uh, improve on my umpiring and, uh, and try and see how best of an umpire I can be and see the, the highest that I can um, achieve. Um, in regards to future down the, the road, what I engage to see in men's netball is that it is well established uh, mm-hmm. alongside the female, the female netball, and um, even have the, the World Cup, and and even been um, in the Olympics um, in the in the future. Mm-hmm. So I Absolutely, mean, yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of growth that has um, happened in, in netball so far over the, the past few years, mm-hmm. and uh, and hopefully we will just continue to see um, growth within the sport as a whole. Absolutely, no, 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 definitely, and I mean, just out of interest, you mentioned umpiring. There, what's it like umpiring in netball? I mean, obviously, you know, we sort of see, uh, you know, like referees in football, it can be difficult. You know, different sports, I suppose, are different. But what's it like to be an umpire in, in netball, uh, Caswell? What's the sort of 
what, what are the players like to sort of umpire? They generally, you know, does it get heated sometimes or? Uh, no, it's um, and there's always a lot more discipline in regards to um, players um, being verbally abusive. To yeah, yeah. It's nowhere near um, in in uh, in netball as it is for football, and yeah. especially in, in the elite. But the, the players are way more disciplined. Yes, yeah. uh, and the umpires um, are. They normally set the precedent from the outset, so the players know what they can and cannot do. Absolutely. And there is also sanction for, for, for misbehaving uh, of players. So I think it's it's a lot more um, respectable in regards to to um, umpires v, v players. Obviously, you're going to have one and two incidents which yeah, yeah. separate my, my flair and, and, and sometimes people have sort of impulses, but uh, it's very minimal. Yeah, no, I can imagine like a fast-paced sport, in, you know, the intensity and when there's a lot of stake as well and, you know, they're definitely here at the moment, but I think you've made a good point there, sort of setting that sort of precedent as well is sort of, you know, key. But it's been really fascinating speaking to you, uh, Caswell. It's been really interesting sort of speaking to you. We sort of wish you all the best um, in your sort of career as a, as a captain, coach and, and umpire and, and sort of, you know, hopefully, um, you know, People like yourself keep getting the word out there and increase the participation uh, for, um, for 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 men and just people in general. Sort of, I think it's inspiring. To speak to people like yourself, but sort of, I know you mentioned that before, but sort of just just sort of finally, if anyone wants to sort of you know touch base and, and see more about what you guys are about, what, what was the sort of the, the social media that they can sort of check out? Uh, yeah, um, so I think the, the, the first call would uh, because. I mean, it could be anywhere in the country, uh, and, course, and we yeah. have. Um, so they contacted the England Men's and Mixed Netball yes. Association. You can uh, they uh, they can just type it in, in in Google and and they will come up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and someone from that association will point them in the right direction into the, the team that is closest to them, um, and then they will just um, contact the team, and uh, the team will take it from there. Brilliant, fantastic. So that was. Um, you know, Caswell Palmer has been very kind enough to join us on the show, the Friday Sports Show. He's a captain, a head coach, umpire in, in netball. Obviously, very passionate about the sport. And, you know, certainly if anyone's listening and wanting to get involved, you know, just Google, get on the website and sort of, you know, get involved. And, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously a sport's growing. And, and it, I find it really fascinating in terms of, you know, the sport itself and, 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 and you know, the, the training they do during the week uh, as well and, 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 and compete, that's, you know, getting people involved is, is the name of the, the show, really. So I want to thank uh, Caswell for coming aboard the show again on the Friday Sports Show. If you host, Jimmy Petruzzi, 94.5 FM, South of City Radio.